What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I'm gonna be answering the top 11 frequently asked questions I get asked about dropshipping. I get messages every day, questions every day across all the different platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and it's brilliant. I love talking to you guys. It's great to hear from people who wanna change their lives for the better and do that by starting a dropshipping business. However, it's understandable starting a business, it is a risk, it is a financial investment. People want to make sure they have the answers to as many questions as possible before they start that business. So what I've done is I've collated, I've put together the top 11 questions I get asked and I'm going to answer them all in one go in this video. So next time somebody asks me one of these questions, I can just redirect them to this video. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy it and let's jump straight into question number one. So one of the most popular questions I get asked is what address should I use? What address should I put on Facebook? What address should I put on my Shopify store? Because they don't want to put their home address out there on the internet for the whole world to potentially see. Now it can feel like that, I felt like that in the beginning, but to be honest, it's nothing too much to worry about. When I first started my very first dropshipping business back in 2016, I was exactly the same. I was really hesitant about putting my home address on my website online in case people would come to my house and knock on my door and complain about a product or whatever it may be. At the time, I was living at home with my parents as well, so that just kind of added to the to the pressure or worry. However, I was so skint at the time, I truly was on a low budget for starting my job shipping business, but I hated my job. On the other hand, I hated my job so much. It was a small risk to take given the potential reward or my potential goal at that time, which was always ultimately to be able to quit my job and do job shipping full time. So I thought, what the hell, this is worth the risk and I did it anyway. I used my home address for about four months. Um, it took me about three or four months before I made a single penny in drop shipping. So if you're on your first one or two months and you still haven't made any money, don't worry, you don't need to worry, it's perfectly normal. At the end of the day, if drop shipping was as easy as it looked on YouTube, everybody would be millionaires by this point. Anyway, going back to the whole address thing. So I had it on my website for the first three months or so. Um, I didn't have a single customer come to my front door, um, which will be pleased to hear about. It was very rarely used. It was only used for returns, which I'll get onto in a second when we address that question. There are a couple of workarounds. So if you have the money to do it, there's services out there which will give you a virtual office. What a virtual office is basically a big office building where people will rent physical offices, it will have a reception, it will have a concierge, and they'll offer the service of being able to use their address for your business, even though your business isn't based there or isn't stationed there. So for example, before I had this whole office here, which I rent to run my businesses from, I used to have a virtual office address. So it was company name at Mercury House, so on and so forth. It looked really professional. Nobody could trace the business back to my personal home address. We were all good to go. If you're looking for a similar service in the UK, go to, I believe it's called UKPostBoxService.com, or if you search for UK virtual office services, you'll be able to find people that will give you that same service for about 12 pounds per month. A lot of them will come with mail forwarding at an extra cost too. So you could be based in the north of Scotland, have an address that says your business is based in London and they'll forward any returns or letters that you receive to your business straight to your home address. The other option is a PO box. However, I don't know why anybody would choose this option because it's a lot more expensive and a PO box is not as professional as your business at Mercury House, London, Mayfair. Some of them will give you posh addresses like that, which is pretty cool. Number two, people ask me all the time because they're worried that when the parcel arrives at the customer's door, because obviously it's going direct to there, won't the customer see the invoice, know how much we've paid, and then be annoyed or kick off, whatever it may be. So the easiest workaround is get it shipped to yourself and then turn it around yourself and forward it on. Obviously it's gonna add on a couple of extra days plus an added postage cost. And when you get to 50 orders a day, you won't be able to keep on top of that sort of thing. So in the beginning you could do that. However, like number one with the whole address thing, it's not a big issue. I've been drop shipping now for six and a half years and I can count on both hands maybe even one hand, the amount of people have actually questioned the paperwork or what's actually on the parcel when it arrives to the customer. I'll try and dig out an image. I'm sure I'll have a return knocking about somewhere here. So I'll take a picture and I'll put it on the screen now. 
So this is essentially what your customer will see. And like I said, it's nothing to worry about. You can also ask your suppliers at the time of fulfillment to not include any invoices or promotions or anything like that. So again, there's no trace back to a Chinese supplier. Number three, should I sell to the UK or the US? This is definitely a popular one on YouTube because the majority of information, the bigger channels are Americans. There's people in the US all the screenshots, all the sales numbers, that sort of thing is typically in dollars. So people just assume drop shipping equals United States. However, my advice would be the ultimate thing you can do is test lots of different countries, see which one is where you get the traction and then optimize your store. But ultimately, make sure that anybody who comes onto your Shopify store can shop in their local currency. Otherwise, it's gonna put them off and it's gonna to lead to your business failing. So take it from your own personal standpoint of view whatever country you're based in watching this now if you're based in the uk and you're used to shopping in british pounds if you went onto a website and had to pay in australian dollars it's probably going to put you off you're probably going to leave and try and find that product here in the uk locally so ultimately i would always stick to local first because it's also going to come into play with question number four which is how do i deal with returns if you're in the uk selling to Australia and you've got an Australian customer that wants to return their item, they're going to kick off. They're not going to be happy about having to return it back to the UK. So in this instance, this is what you would do. Or well, here's the different outcomes. Number one is a customer says their product is damaged. You ask for an image or a video of this. If it's within the first 14 days and or 30 days, whatever your returns guarantee is, and it looks like the item hasn't been mistreated, then you're obliged to give that person a refund. However, the item is broken, so I don't want it, the customer doesn't want it. Tell them to put it in the bin and refund their money. Scenario number two is they just want to return the item for whatever reason. It's not broken, however, they just want to return it. Again, if it's within that period, then you're obliged to do so, in which case I'll get, it, I'll get the item sent back to myself, to my office. That way, later on down the line or over time, you'll build up kind of like an in-house stock, a certain quantity of the item. Should there be any issues further down the line with existing customers or people who reach out and contact you, they place an order, they get the order confirmation that says it's going to be two weeks or a week, depending on what the item is, of course. And they say, actually, I need this within three days. I'll check stock here. And if we've got it, we can send it out UK locally from our office here. Number five, how do I start a dropshipping business? It's a very simple three-step plan. I could perhaps do a more in-depth detailed video on this one. Number one is you need to find a product. Number two is you need to build your Shopify store around that product so it's branded. And then number three is you need an ad creative to then use on your marketing platforms. So first of all, establish what products you're gonna sell. Make sure it's a product that's safe to sell. It's got the profit room. It's got the margins for profit in there. It's trending, it's in demand, and you know for a fact people are buying it. Number two, build your branded Shopify store around that product, make it professional, get a good logo, color schemes, fonts, everything. And then number three, get some user-generated content around that product so you have a few different ad creatives to test. Question number six, do I need to register as a business before I start selling? So from personal experience, this is exactly what I did. Whether you follow this is completely up to you or not. Ultimately, you should always seek your own advice when it comes to things like taxes. I was young and naive at the time when I started. I didn't care about legalities. I didn't care about taxes. I just started selling. I wanted to make money so I could quit my job. Fast forward four or five months, I was making over 20K a month and I thought I should probably get an accountant at this point to help me deal with things like taxes, income expenses and that sort of thing. So it was at that point in which we registered our company and from that point onwards, and since then I've been with the same accountant, he's taken care of everything. To my knowledge, however, this is kind of like the textbook process that people should go by. Number one is they should notify, this is if you're in the UK by the way, so number one is you should register for self-assessment. This is if you're gonna be a sole trader, you're basically telling the government that you're starting a business so that at the end of every single tax year, you have to submit what's called a self-assessment. It's basically a breakdown of your income 
and expenses so they can work out how much profit they've made and from that they can work out how much to tax you. However, I do believe you don't need to declare any income until you've made your first £1,000. That is to my knowledge. What you should always do is go to the government website, just search self-assessment or self-employed taxes or self-employed income or when to register for self-assessment and all the latest up-to-date information will be there on the .gov website. Number seven, how much money do I need? Um, as much as possible is probably the most accurate answer, but as a very minimum, this is a very, very, very minimum is 200 pounds. With 200 pounds, if you get everything bang on perfect from the very beginning, you can build a business, a dropshipping business with 200 pounds from the ground up, but you will be reinvesting every single penny for the first few weeks or even months to build up that cash reserve before you can start taking money out of the business. Preferably, I would say somewhere between sort of a thousand pounds and two thousand pounds, ideally, unless you have a mentor or course to follow that's going to put you down the right path, save you from testing dozens and wrong, incorrect creatives, and shows you how to properly build and design a Shopify store. So just as a recap then, £200 if you're an experienced professional, £500 if you have a mentor showing you along the way every step, and then about £1,000 if you have a course that actually works to show you. But eight, how long does it take to get your first sale? So again, this is gonna vary based on how well experienced you are when it comes to drop shipping. If you're really good at drop shipping and know what you're doing, you've got a decent store, good product, ad creative marketing campaign, you can get your first sale on your first day. A lot of the people I work with, this is the case. They will see their very first sale within hours of running their very first advertisements. Instead of asking how long does it take though, a better question is probably how much do you have to spend? Because ultimately this is how you gauge the results of your ads. As a rough rule of thumb, if you've spent the same amount as the cost of your product, so if you're selling the products for 40 pounds, if you spent 40 pounds on an ad set on Facebook and you haven't seen a sale by then, something is wrong and you should switch it off. You should definitely see at least one sale before you reach that point of ad spend. Number nine, how do I test a product on Facebook? I'm gonna be producing a video later this week on this, so I'm not gonna to say too much, but in the beginning, really small spends, put it out to lots of different audiences with a couple of different creatives, run it for two, three days max, see what happens, use the breakdowns to find out where the interest, the clicks, the purchases are coming from, then take a very few hand-selected ad sets, the best performers, to then duplicate into your scaling campaigns and this is where you double down on those significantly increase your budgets get those ad sets out of the learning phase and producing optimal results question number 10 is how to deal with long delivery times number one steer clear of alex so we'll go from an aliexpress perspective first number one steer clear of any supplies that don't offer guaranteed 15 day delivery Otherwise, unfortunately, it could be anywhere from two, three or four weeks. Also, make sure you're crystal clear about your shipping policy, your shipping rate. Make sure the customer knows exactly realistically when they're going to expect their product. Even if it is going to take two weeks, tell them it's going to take two weeks. And if they like the product enough, they'll be willing to wait. You can also use people like CJ Dropshipping who have warehouses all across the globe. They may even have the products that you want to dropship in stock, in a fulfillment center, in the country that you want to sell to in which case you'll be able to offer competitive shipping times against any local business. Another option is also drop shipping agents. These are people who specifically specialize in fulfilling drop shipping orders. They'll know all of the best shipping methods and have all of the right contracts with the right delivery companies and shipping companies, and they should be able to get your items delivered in less than two weeks. If somebody can't guarantee you that, I would try and find somebody else who can. Do not try and sell an item that's gonna take over two weeks to get to the customer. That's too long and it will only result in a headache in customer service complaints that you'll have to deal with, chargebacks from PayPal and credit card companies, and also negative comments on your Facebook page and posts, which is detrimental, significantly detrimental to the success of your business. Number 11, last but not least, should you advertise on Facebook or TikTok? The best thing you could do is test both, see which one you get the most success on, and then double down on it. 
me, I'm pretty biased with this question because all of my experiences on Facebook, I've been advertising on Facebook since 2016. I've spent a lot of money on Facebook, so I know it pretty well. So I'm a big fan of Facebook despite the hate that it gets. Ultimately though, from a from an unbiased and an honest answer, both platforms can work. It's just a matter of testing both and seeing which one works for your business. And so with that being said then guys, that is the top 11 frequently asked questions about dropshipping. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you stuck with me this long, make sure you subscribe to see more of my content. I'd really appreciate that. Make sure you drop me a like as well so I know what sort of content you guys enjoy so I can make more of it. All the best if you're starting a business this Q4. Make sure you come back at any point and ask me any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.